Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity, where we are bridging the gap between the typical community and the disability community. And today, Roberta and I are gonna talk about parents who have a disability who parent children. That sounds uh, good. That's a great topic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start you off with some numbers. Okay. That's, that's usually where I like to start. And as of 2012, unfortunately, most of the research that I found on this was at least 10 years old. So maybe the time is gonna come around again where we'll get new numbers. But as of 2012, 4.1 million parents with disabilities are actively parenting in the United States, which translates into 6.2% of children under 18 are being parented by an individual with disabilities. So what's the big deal? What is the big deal, Roberta? One of the big deals that I discovered in reading this lengthy article that was published in 2012, it stood right out to me in big red ink was that 35 states mm -hmm. include disability as a rights for termination of parental rights. Wow. Close my, close my mouth. This was in 2012. Uh, it's an Even, upsetting statistic. Absolutely. Even though, like, according to the National Council on Disability, there's no difference if a child in child development or any issues with children, there's no difference between a typical parent or somebody who's not typical raising children and the outcome of children. Just wanted to throw that in there. Well, in it, it's absolutely a perfect thing to talk about because there are so many people in this country living with a disability. 5.6 million people live with a mobility issue. Um, let, let me get to the rest of the numbers. Of, of the people living with a disability, parenting a child under the age of 18, 2.8% have a mobility disability. 2.3% um, have a cognitive disability. 2.3% have a daily activity limitation. Um, and that includes things like depression and anxiety. 1.4% um, have a hearing disability and 1.2% have a vision disability. These are all disabilities that people have learned to work with, overcome, and there are a system of supports out there available to them. Um, so what, what happens when a parent is being, um, starts the, the termination process starts for a parent with disabilities? Well, one of the things that a disabilities attorney would do is they would, go right to the Americans with Disability Act. And just as a refresher, this was um, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. They protect, it protects the rights of people with disabilities. It says that agencies and programs that receive money from the federal government cannot treat people with disabilities differently. The ADA, is the same thing for state and local government because please remember your state government receives federal money. They cannot just your your state government, including child protective agency, cannot just discriminate against you or anyone else based on their disability. So, what should these state and local governments do when there's a report to child protection? protective services about a parent with disabilities, they need to provide clear supports. They need to provide services and activities and that help the person make changes, um, provide help. There, again, like I said, if you have a disability, there are a net, there is a network of people out there specifically waiting to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure with people with disabilities can take part in programs that will provide them with the supports that they need, including parent education. So that, and that means um, providing services such as a sign language interpreter, um, like text to speech or um, visual supports, um, mobility supports for people with mobility disabilities. In other words, make the space that they need to be in 
accessible. And that's something that uh, Sherry shared with me. If you want to talk about your example of knowing a parent with disability. Yeah. When my son was in elementary school, a mom there had MS and she was in a wheelchair. So she would have to go in through the front door to uh, go in for school activities. So it was just a matter of somebody meeting her at the front door to let her in so she could navigate the school. Um, also, when she picked him up after school um, in the van, you know, she was able to do that as well. And she would come out and, you know, hang out with the other parents while we were all waiting. Um, you know, in her. So, did you find that her mobility issue impacted her ability to parent? No, not at all. No. I found her son to, uh, um, like look after his mom a little bit more and make sure she was safe or, um, you know, getting up in the van safely or whatever. Um, sometimes he'd like a ride on the, uh, <laughs> on the wheelchair. She didn't live too far away. So on nice days, she would just, uh, motorize down and pick him up and he would be found on like the scooter type of thing being driven home on that, you know, so. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. So people with disabilities have rights. They have rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, just like we do. And I think the bottom line here is that while we see their limitations as a disability, they don't. And a child raised by someone with disabilities is not going to see that their parents' difference as a disability. They're gonna see it as who they are. And we talked about this a little bit when we talked about person first language. There are communities such as the deaf community that prefer to refer to themselves as a deaf person rather than a person with hearing loss. They prefer to be called a deaf person. But, you know, whatever your preference is, I respect that. Mm -hmm. So, but I think this speaks to that same ideology of you know, I'm a parent. I'm a parent with a difference, just like a parent who has a different, um, a different language at home. Right. It, they're still a parent. And what I've discovered about parents as a special education teacher is that regardless of how I view them, parents' number one goal in life is to put their children first. And they do the absolute best that they can for their children because they love them. So, and I think that's across all cultures, absolutely. all demographics, um, you know, always wanting the best and to better their children. Absolutely. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So please remember, if you know somebody or if any, if this ever happens to you as a person with a disability or Child Protective Services gets involved, please remind them of the Americans with Disabilities Act and that um, this that as a state agency, Child Protective Services has to provide a person with disabilities the supports that they need, whether it's um, with, whether it's physical access, um, hearing access, vision access, or, or even someone to break things down and, and explain it further because of a cognitive disability. So absolutely. If you guys like our content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We talk about all things to do with disabilities. Absolutely. So smash all those buttons. We Please. appreciate and, and drop us a comment if this yes. sparked a, um, an idea in your head and you want to know more because again like I said this research was very very lengthy and we could talk about it all day so let us know if you want to know more about this topic or anything else in the meantime we appreciate you yes guys build those bridges all right have a good night guys bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.